The Wall Street Journal recently did a piece that essentially told the story of how Bob Chapek got himself fired and Disney got themselves Bob Iger back. Now, the majority of the article is, is a retelling of the events over the course of Chapek's two-plus years as president of Disney, a story that I'm sure most of you are, are fairly familiar with by this point. But there were a number of points made in the article that were you know, subtle points that I, I feel like they deserve some, some commentary because they tell us just how bad things were. And I, I mean, they were really bad, worse than I had even thought, uh, and in some cases specifically at Disneyland. The article starts by covering the crisis in which Chapek's presidency began, that is February 2020, when Chapek took over, was also when COVID hit and everything shut down. Now, what's interesting is actually this period, the COVID period when during the lockdown was actually a positive period for, for Chapek. It, it worked in his favor. Real trouble didn't begin until things started to open up. The article cites the Parental Rights in Education Act in Florida. And then later the article discusses the reservation system, Genie Plus, the firings in, in the C-suite execs, uh, Scarlett Johansson. And you want to know what's wild. What's, what's really, really wild about that is that all of those things, those things that I just mentioned, more or less happened within a one-year stretch. Just over one year did all of that come down. I mean, sure, the reservation system was in effect as far as Disneyland goes, uh, you know, since the parks opened. We all kind of accepted that. We knew that that was part of the bargain in getting the parks open initially. But those days have been long gone for a long time now. And, you know, still the reservation's here. But uh, otherwise, I mean, oh, man, it just feels like it feels like it's been forever. Like we, we, we've been, been doing this for years, but really most of the negativity that has surrounded Chapek's term has occurred in just about a year. And it all apparently came to a head during that Q4 earnings call. And per that article, uh, Disney CFO Christine McCarthy suggested that, that Chapek, during that call, during the uh, earnings call, that he, he faced that issue head on, that he, that he talked about it and that he, that he, that he owns it. But instead, <laughs> instead, Chapek glossed over it and was talking about, I don't know, uh, the, the recent success of Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party at Walt Disney World. Now, this is how the Wall Street Journal you know, portrayed it, covered it. But if we're to believe that, that, that that's really how it went down, I mean, to, to talk about that, to think about that in, in retrospect, that is madness. <laughs> that is just total madness. And it, and it certainly does not paint Chapek in a light that suggests that he's some kind of leader or that he's, that he's fit for that, or that he was fit for that job. Next, the journal brings up the executive retreat. You guys remember this back in June <clears throat> when they, uh, they had their yearly executive retreat and uh, Chapek was renewed for two more years. Actually, that renewal was, was up for doubt. At that time, even, we were wondering, would they? Could they possibly? We were already thinking, could they possibly be firing Chapek or not renewing Chapek at that point? And apparently there were those on the board who weren't positive, that they weren't sure. Uh, but those, those few doubters were, I guess, somehow convinced to agree to, to extend him. It was a unanimous vote. <laughs> it was a unanimous vote. And Chapek was extended for two more years. Now, that's not the shocking part of this. Uh, I mean, we were a little bit surprised at the time, I guess, but that's not really... What the, what's shocking is that the journal is reporting that the reason why they extended him was that they were hoping that the extension would boost his confidence and somehow shore up his performance. And I have to say, when I read that, and as I'm saying it out loud to you now, I cannot, I cannot think of a more naive point of view to be, having, to be taken by... This is the Disney board of directors. These are CEOs of some of the biggest companies around, Nike, uh, General Motors. These are accomplished people, and they thought, <laughs> they really thought that they could, you know, just give them one more try. <laughs> they, they knew. I just, I cannot fathom how they could be that aware of what the issues were with Chapek. They were, they, they were obvious to us. They had to be obvious to the board. They, they, had, they knew what his deficiencies were. They knew what his shortcomings were. And they thought that giving him two more years would help. They thought that would change him, that they would give him more confidence and shore up his performance. Well, it did give him confidence, uh, but not in the way that they were expecting. It emboldened him. 
It, it suggested to him that they liked what he was doing, and he gave them more of it. And I have to say, when we were looking at this from a distance, I remember talking about this in a video and saying, okay, they renewed him. Does that, does that mean that they like what he's doing? Does that mean that they, this is, is this, is this really what the Disney company is? Is this really what the Disney company wants? Is that kind of, you know, decision making and attitude? I, I, I thought that was the case. I wondered. It sure looked like that. Okay, let's get on to the next comment. This is a quote from the Wall Street Journal article. Iger told a friend he believed Mr. Chapik was a failure in the most important measures of success for a CEO. Internal satisfaction, investor relations, and consumer support. So, so everything then. He was a failure at everything. I mean, he's not, he's, <laughs> he's not leaving much room here uh, you know, for anything else. What else was he was not a failure at? And again, if it's so obvious that he wasn't, if that was so plain to see, why did they renew him? By the way, I used to think that it was because they didn't have a backup, that they didn't have somebody to replace him with. It's a very reasonable assumption to make. That, that there was no succession plan, that Disney, which by the way, I, that was a problem in and of itself. Disney should have had a succession plan to begin with. They should have had one they were trying when, when Iger was quitting. Uh, Chapik was just plan B, really. I mean, it wasn't a true succession plan. Except after reading this, I, I got to feel like, and, and the clues are there in the past now, Iger was there all the time. He was Basically, just waiting. All they had to do was ask. They did just ask, and he said yes. In a heartbeat, he said yes. It was as if he, he never left. By reports, he, he, he never vacated his Burbank office. That, he, he was still there. He was still uh, an executive chairman of the company. He was still holding meetings with people, you know, counseling them, talking to them. I get the feeling that Iger regretted leaving almost immediately in the same way that he kept changing his mind the other times when he tried to quit. He changed his mind because he couldn't leave. He didn't want to leave. And so I have a feeling it's the same. He did finally leave at this point, but he didn't want to. He regretted it immediately. And it was just waiting for them to come back. So this idea that there was no plan, they had a backup this whole time. They just needed to ask, literally. Some of Mr. Chapik's recent moves weighed on her, that is CFO Christine McCarthy, including a programming strategy that also served as a way to shield losses in Disney's streaming division. Cute, is how she described it disparagingly. If I were the president of the Disney company and somebody described one of my plans as being cute, I would probably just lose my ish right there in the boardroom. Now, not that I would want to be surrounded by a bunch of yes men and women, but the idea, uh, this comes up again, the idea that Chapik is somehow viewed as not a serious person with serious ideas. Why? <laughs> Why was he in that position to begin with? And Chapik apparently knew that McCarthy was not a fan of his. I don't know how else to put that. Uh, he alleges, according to the article, he alleges that, that McCarthy undermined him, that, that she presented one set of data to him, financial data, uh, and another set, a different set to the board of directors, a, a, a financial set to him that looked promising, uh, and another set to the board that looked bad, that not so promising. And this, of course, is, is kind of crazy. This is a red flag because books are books. Uh, you know, you can't, you can't lie. You can't talk your way around data. You can't present it in one way. They are what they are in anybody with any sense, especially somebody with the financial acumen that, that Chapik obviously has. He understands finance. The idea that they, he, she would just lie to him and give him different information that she's giving to the board, that's that's wild. And so per the journal, that's what Chapik told the board, that McCarthy had lost her focus, that she was distracted by her husband's ailing health, which is a story we could get into, uh, and that, that she was unstable. I don't get the idea, by the way, that the board believed him, obviously, because, uh, you know, for one, M McCarthy is a two-time cancer survivor herself. So it's not like she's just going to lose it all of a sudden. She's, she apparently is a, a fairly tough competitor. Here's one that I enjoy just a little bit. The, the journal reports that as profit margins began to shrink uh, at Disneyland, they're talking about the park specifically now, Disneyland margins started to shrink and that bloggers and social media influencers were beginning to amplify, to give voice to people's complaints about rising ticket prices. Now, I personally have never complained about ticket prices. I, I feel like Disneyland as 
as a place is still a very good value. Genie Plus is stupid and not a good value. <laughs> it is what it is. It's there. Uh, but I bring this up here because, I mean, if, if, the, if the journal is reporting this, they're probably getting that from, you know, whoever their sources were, having conversations with them. They probably brought that up, which means that, that bloggers and vloggers and influencers are, are being heard, at least listened to. Now, I've always felt that, that we weren't taken seriously. You know, and, and probably there's some good reasons for that because it's not as though any of us had to go through uh, a vetting process. We didn't have to go to college to get a degree in blogging. <laughs> Nobody has to get certified. You can just show up and start doing it. So I understand why they, you know, the, the, the community as a whole may not be taken seriously, but there are a lot of very serious people doing serious business, you know, blogging and, and blogging, et cetera. I like to think that I am, for example. Uh, so it's it's good to see or hear that we're at least being acknowledged and, and mentioned in that in in this conversation. Whether or not it results in any kind of the kind of change that we're looking for remains to be seen, but uh, you know that's that's good at least. And then finally, this is this is a story that I would love to know more about. Love to know more about. It was suggested in the article that Josh Demaro might quit. That that he had well that they were afraid. That tomorrow would quit. Nothing else was said. That's all that. That's all they said. That, that they were afraid tomorrow might quit. Now, and that they didn't go beyond that. But you have to assume that there's, you know, way more story to that than than what's being suggested here, because you don't fear that unless there's cause. Unless it, somebody had to say something to somebody. Did he literally threaten to quit, or was it like part of a conversation he had with somebody where he said, you know what? I don't like what's going on here, and if things don't change, I might start looking elsewhere. You know, I might, I might start looking for another job. And the idea of that is not unheard of. You know, it, it's, we've already got precedent with that. Tom Staggs uh, didn't like the way he was being treated at the Disney company. He was the former president of the Parks Division. He just, he just left and started his own thing, did quite well at it, as a matter of fact. But if tomorrow did threaten to quit, it's not because, you know, he disagreed with what JPEG was doing with Disney Plus. But if tomorrow did threaten to quit, if they were afraid he was going to quit, it's not because, you know, he disagreed with how JPEG was handling you know, Disney Plus or, or, or Reedy Creek or Scarlett Johansson. It would have to be because of JPEG's park-specific decisions. And which of those could it be? I mean, obviously, reservation system, annual passes, Genie Plus, right? So we have to infer that if, he, if, if those were his issues, and he's now staying, he's still here, that, does that mean that there's hope for those issues to come around still, that they, they, they could be undone? If his problems were with the policies, and not just, I mean, I suppose they could be with just Chapek is an awful human, but I don't, I don't necessarily believe that's the case. I'm not positive that Chapek is an awful human. He's just bad for Disney. He could be a very nice guy for all we know. Uh, but if the, if they are policy decisions, then and, and tomorrow has decided to stay, that has to mean that there's some kind of hope uh, that you know that they st we're, we're still possibly on track for Disney unwinding those Chapic decisions. So stay tuned on this. It's I know it's you know it's early and people are just like, hey, what is what is Iger going to do? What's he done? He hasn't done anything. Stay tuned. It's not over. Uh, there's still a chance for because they. In order to restore confidence, you have to sort of fix those destructive, and when I say destructive, I mean uh, what they've done to customer satisfaction, to guest loyalty, to, to, to the guest. Iger said it himself. People were falling out of love with the Disney brand. And it's because of, of stuff like that, because of the stuff that we're experiencing in Disneyland. So as a voice of the people, of the Disneyland people, and as I mentioned before, and hopefully, you know, we're being heard a little bit. I think it's time. I think that the, the direction that Disney needs to go is to make it about us again. Make it about you again. Make it about the, the Disney guest again. It's not about the money. The money will follow. That's how Disneyland and the Disney company was built in the first place, by, by creating first. Find a way to make it about the guest first. Make it about just putting on a good show. You can't put commerce before art. Because if you do, then it stops being art. With that, let's wrap with an interesting article that was posted on CNBC. Uh, they made some predictions, you know, for the media business, uh, predictions for 2023. And a few of those predictions 
were specific to the Disney company. And the first was that both Kevin Mayer and Tom Staggs would return to the Disney company. Now, Tom Staggs is the name I just mentioned. He left Disney a while back, created Candle Media. Disney would buy Candle Media and then bring back Mayer and, and Staggs into the executive offices. That, by the way, would be a, a signal that Tom Staggs would be the leading candidate to replace Iger when he does leave. And this is something that we discussed in a previous video, and I, I alluded to uh, it earlier in this video. Tom Staggs left in, what was it, 2015, I believe it was. Iger was, again, he was planning to, to retire, planning to quit, and uh, Staggs was considered one of, the, one of the front runners to replace him. He was passed over. Well, he wasn't, they didn't choose somebody else. Iger just decided to not quit. Iger decided to stay on for a little while longer. But whatever happened in that conversation, whatever happened during that process, it upset Staggs and Mayer. It upset, them, it upset them so much that they quit. They just up and quit, started Candle Media. It's doing pretty well. Uh, and, you know, and, that, and that was actually what elevated Tom, or, uh, Tom, or Tom Staggs was the president of Parks at the time. That's, what, that's how Chapik elevated into that position. And then, you know, here we are. So if they were to bring either of those guys or both, really, they, I think they're a package deal at this point. They would have to buy Candle Media and, and bring it into the fold. That was my sort of leader in the clubhouse a couple weeks ago. Uh, and this prediction by CNBC does seem to support that further. Next, it was predicted that Bob Iger would extend his contract. When, he, when it comes up in 24, that he would, stay, he would sign on again for I don't, another couple of years. This, of course, contradicts the, the first prediction in a way uh, you know, that, that they would bring back Staggs and, and Mayer. Because you don't bring back those two unless you have plans for them beyond just being another C-suite exec. The, the, there would be a definite succession plan if you brought them back. But if Iger renews, that kind of you know, slows that theory down. Now, they could... Iger could still renew, and they could bring back Mayer and Staggs, uh, put them in another position for the short term, which is something we'll get back to here in a second. And that's because their third prediction was that Disney CFO and leader of the coup that brought down Chapik, uh, that she would be leaving the company. Per the article, per the journal, this would be because, or could be, because there's some, some lingering doubt about her loyalty or whatever, because she was you know, part of Chapik's inner circle for so many years. Now, I have to say, I can't even believe they put that on paper. <laughs> that is terrible logic. That is terrible, terrible logic. Christine McCarthy put her entire position on the line. She went, she went out of her way to bring Chapik down. She didn't do that because she's a fan of his policies. She obviously disagreed with just about everything that Chapik was doing and wanted him out of there. And she, she put everything on the line to, to bring him down, according to other stories. So, Either that's not true, or this is terrible logic. Especially considering she was also Iger's chief financial officer for five years. So it's not like she doesn't have any loyalty to him to begin with. If anything, I would think she's more loyal to Iger than she would be uh, to Chapik. Having said that, I, I do think she's going to leave, but not for any political reason. I think she's just done. I think, she, I think she's ready to, uh, to retire. You know, her contract comes up herself in, in uh, 2024. And as we mentioned previously, her husband is going through some health issues, and uh, I, I feel like there's a very reasonable chance that she's just, you know, she's done enough, that she's made enough money, and she's, you know, had enough time being a CFO, and maybe she does want to spend more time with her family. I think that there's, it's possible that that rumor has been going around, and that's why CNBC picked that up, they're, 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 you know, that, that she was leaving the company in 24. Their logic behind that is, is faulty otherwise, but I think that there is a reasonable chance, and it does reconcile with the first two predictions uh, that, that Iger would renew and that they would bring back Staggs and Meyer. Iger renews in 2024. McCarthy doesn't. They bring in Tom Staggs and they buy Candle Media, bring in Staggs and Mayer, and then Staggs becomes the CFO, which is also, he was, he was the CFO before he was the park's president. So he's familiar with the position. He's familiar with Iger. He would step into that role get seasoned for a couple of years, uh, get him, make him ready to be president, and then Iger retires finally in 2026, and Staggs is the president of Disney for who knows how long, because he's a young man, actually, so you know <laughs> this could be a little while. That all sounds quite logical and doable, and I think I would be behind that. What say you, Fresh Bake? What do you guys think of this story? I know it's kind of we kind of rehashed some of it, but it's interesting to hear some of the more behind-the-scenes uh, 
you know, thought processes, you know, the, 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 what people were thinking. And it, it's kind of shocking to me how poorly the Disney company handled this. How I just, you like to think that they're better than that. You like to think that they're above that, that there's some really smart, savvy people out there making really good, savvy business decisions. But uh, I got to tell you, uh, the way they handled Chapik is just shocking to me. And uh, I, I just, I hopefully they've got this thing turned around. They need to make some big moves, uh, some very serious, guest-friendly, guest-centric decisions here in the next couple of years if they're going to restore the confidence. Because I tell you what, uh, it's it hasn't you know it, it hasn't been great even since Iger's been back. I just looked at the stocks this morning. The stock is now at eighty. What was it? 85, 86 now, which is lower, lower than it was when they when they fired JPEG. I think if it's not, it's about the same. It went up pretty sharply for a minute, came back down, went up a little bit. Right now, it's trading at eighty six dollars and seventy seven cents, which is as low as it's been ever. <laughs> okay, I think there was a point where it was two cents lower back in early November. Uh, so obviously. You know, the, the, the finance people, the, the smart finance people aren't completely sold by uh, what Disney's doing post Chapik firing and Iger hiring. Although some of that has to do with the overall market, which we can get to. They raise rates again. Uh, but that's a whole other conversation. Let's hear from you, Fresh Baked. I want to hear your thoughts on this topic uh, and, and what your hopes are for the future. Let us know in the comments below. And then follow us on Instagram at underscore Fresh Baked, on Twitter at Fresh Baked Disney, that's Fresh with no E, and on TikTok at Fresh Baked Disney. And if you like our show and want to show you support, please do consider joining our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash Fresh Baked. Otherwise, thanks again for watching, everybody. We love you. Be safe out there. Be kind to one another. Fresh Baked.